Good morning, everyone. Lori Marie here. Mix smart, mix blah. <laughs> oh, let's try that again. Hi, everyone. Lori Marie here, mixed media artist in Vallejo, California. I have a few bloopers here this morning uh, trying to get this intro going. Anyway, a gorgeous day. Hudson and I have taken our walk. I played in the dark. I played in the morning. Uh, so I want to get this video posted because it's the class I'm teaching tomorrow. So I'm a little behind the ball. Anyway, uh, lots going on here. I got some happy mail and I'm grateful for that so I'll show you that and then we'll jump into the project for today okay all right see you on the table good morning I want to take this opportunity to say a couple of thank yous um, I got a lovely package happy mail from Lisa Lisa sent us some money for the village which is very very nice much appreciated a lovely note. Look at this. Girl after my own heart. She sent me some socks from Vermont. Yay! Love stripy socks. This is a, a cute little package with a bunch of ephemera and underpants in it. And some images. Much loved. Another package. This is um, that magnetic poetry kit. I don't have one, so this is really, really fun. I'm excited about that. Some graph paper, lovely. Very, very fun. Thank you, Lisa. I think I got a thank you note off to you, with any luck at all. This is from, I believe it's Roe. Let me see, peek at this. Mm, we go by Lark. Okay. Um, so look at this. This is a book that they sent, she and her partner, and they cut this out and made room for Altoid cans in there. Isn't that amazing? So that'll be really fun to play with. I haven't checked the signatures yet. Looks like maybe they're glued in. That will be fun. Whoops. And that book was wrapped in a map. My favorite. Oh, this is the other amazing thing. Look at this book. Um, they said that they sell them at um, Art and Soul Retreats in Portland, Oregon. They use a scroll saw. They make Houses and castles and cat heads, dragons. But look, this is a book that they have cut into a face. <laughs> Isn't that fun? So that'll be really fun to alter. Fun images in there too. Ooh, that's going to be fun to collage on. So those are my happy mails for right now. <clears throat> I'm so happy to get these happy mails. So thank you so much. Good morning. So this is what we're going to play with today. I started off with one project and kept adding supplies and supplies and supplies. So that's usually <laughs> how this journey goes. Anyway, uh, I'm going to use her as the back cover of a book. I think that that will be fun. I'll probably nail it down. Uh, I'll put tacky glue on it, glue it down, and then nail it. Nail it. So lots going on in the background of this piece. Uh, I think next time for the, um, the final piece, instead of using something so dark, I used her. I think I would use something with less background perhaps and more her so that she shows better but there's a lot of stuff going on in the background so it's very very fun fun feel so yeah that's what we're going to do today
you know I'm supposed to be doing something else. But I wanted to play with this a little bit this morning. So what you're going to need is gesso and Mod Podge and some strips of fun colored fabric, some circles. My circles always look like ovals. I'm okay with that. And the centers of them. I have, uh, I'm repurposing a canvas board that was given to me by Jan. And then a piece of fabric that's bigger than your substrate, whatever substrate you're using. I'm just working small this morning. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to glue these strips of fun fabric, uh, with the strings included of course, onto that piece of fabric. And with no particular order in mind, I'm just going to go down that piece of fabric. I want some of the background fabric to show, so I'm just going to lay these pieces down. I'm not quite sure how many pieces it's going to take to cover it, but we'll find out as we move down that piece of fabric. some hubby cleaned my Teflon sheet for me yesterday. Looks so nice and clean. As you can see, I'm just going to put some strips up the fabric to create kind of a crisscross. Aren't these gorgeous fabrics? These are from Jan's sister. She's a quilter. So I've got some yummy bits and pieces of fabric. So we're basically using that first piece of fabric as the the underpants. This is a little bit different for us as far as not using papers but we have played with fabric like this before. And then while this is still a little damp from that Mod Podge, I am, I got a couple pieces left. Let's just toss you on here. Give it up. Love the strings. Leaving the strings on. OK. 
Okay, so while this is still a little damp, I'm just going to lay some of these odd circles down. Need a little moisture, do you? They're not staying, so just push them down. And then I have the center pieces. I'm supposed to be getting ready for my day. Yeah, but here we are, playing. Mm -hmm. Looks pretty good. We're gonna leave it just like that. All right, now I'm gonna grab my gesso. Always try not to wiggle the table too much for you guys. Okay. And just paint down your fabric with your gesso. A lot, a little. It does not have to be the same consistency or thickness all the way down whatever you can get on there. All right, I'm happy with that coverage. Now we're going to go in and remove our circles and dots. Save these, we might use them later. background, huh? Pretty fun. All right, we're going to let this dry. I'm going to take a little bit of uh, yellow acrylic paint. And with a damp brush, same brush, you know that. I'm just going to flick some paint. So fun. So everything but the kitchen sink, guys, right? I'm 
going to grab a napkin, make sure and take it down to its final layer. And I'm just going to glue that on there with some Mod Podge. watercolor paint will move underneath so just be prepared for that. paint's not moving too much. The yellow paint's not quite dry, so that's moving a little bit. But I'm okay with that. All right, now I have to walk away from it, let it dry. So I'm bringing in my glue dots. My studio was all nice and clean this morning, believe it or not. Now I've dragged everything out again. That's what it's all about. So just put some glue dots randomly ah, on your piece. We're going to put down some of the transfer foil on these dots. They seem to be sticking quite well, so that's good. Good sticky dots. Wowza. Gorgeous. Okay. I don't think I have any more dots in my place. I'm just going to go over it. I think we got them all. I'm going to grab my spray adhesive so we can have just a little bit of gold in there. In a very well ventilated area, spray your piece with a little bit of adhesive. Let it get tacky. I'm going to go ahead and use this, although it's got the dots in it, I'm just going to go ahead and use this. don't want the gold to be even every place because we do want a difference in the appearance and in the texture. Take a peek at that. That 
is pretty wonderful. So I'd like to see a little bit more color in here. So I'm going to grab a yellow um, gelato and just go along some of the seams in, in the fabric. Bring that yellow out. What is she doing now? We never know. All I know is my workspace is getting smaller and, and smaller and smaller. Okay. Beautiful. Where's my purple? Beautiful texture on this, huh? You guessed it. We're going to cut it up. I'm just going to go down the center. I hate to use my fabric scissors on this, but well, you're, I'm not using my fabric scissors. I was tempted to grab my fabric scissors, but I'm not. That's fun. Mm. Wow, delicious. Trim off those the outer edges when it's dry. Can't have both of those out, huh? All right, I am going to glue this down with some. Uh, can't I have that side too? I want it all. I want it all. Trying to get all the raggedy edges on the inside. I think we can do it. All right, just reconstructing that with all the raggedy stuff on the inside. That's very fun. Very, very fun. I'll trim off the outer edges later. I'm going to grab my tacky glue and glue this down. It needs a little bit stronger than the Mod Podge at this point. I just separated everything out so I could remember where it went.
I have no idea what I'm going to put on the top of this as far as a focal point. But that's okay. The answers will come. All right, I'm going to put this on because I'm sure I'm going to smoosh it around. I'm trying to get things the way I want them. Oh, goodness gracious, look at this, all this, oh, this could be a mixed media piece all by itself, huh? All right, yes, I am going to cover this with a piece of deli sheet or wax paper, and I'm going to sit on it. Bum art. So our lovely piece is dry. It's got lots of jagged edges on it, which is very cool. And I am so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this fabric off right at that canvas board. The edge of that canvas board best I can. take my sanding block and I'm just going to go around the edge and rough up the edge a little bit. It's always a bad sound, I know. Okay, that edge sanded down nicely. very, very nicely. And I don't know what I'm going to do next, so I am just going to let this talk to me. It's pretty complete, just as is. I don't know that it needs anything else. It's kind of fun. We'll think about it. Good morning. Dark o'clock. Handsome hubby just scooted off to work. Hudson's in his basket, and I'm looking at this gorgeous background. Very happy with it. I know that I want to put some kind of a focal point on here. I know that we have been kind of uh, playing with the backgrounds and not the focal points, but uh, with all of this texture, this is a little bit different. So we're going to walk through it a little further. I have a piece of uh, white wrapping paper and I'm going to cut it to about the size of a printer sheet for my printer. Now I just have a black and white printer, uh, it, a laser printer. It has to be a laser printer, okay? I know you guys are fiddling around with your ink jets and hairspray and things like that. And what I can tell you is they will fade. In your books it doesn't matter. But if you're doing a wall piece, they fade uh, pretty quickly. So I have the uh, white wrapping paper to about the size of my uh, printer sheet. And I'm going to take some tape and just tape this down well on all four sides. Okay. and then tape on these sides as well, all right? And then the uh, focal point that I chose is her. Isn't she gorgeous? So if you have a color laser printer, please use that because the, the colors are uh, nice in your focal point. I don't have that option. I just have a black and white. So I put her on the copier and I ran a piece of the wrapping paper taped down to the printer paper 
through my printer. And here she is. Okay? So you'll go in and remove her from her printer paper and see how translucent she is. Yummy. So I'm just going to take her off her paper. Now the wrapping paper is fragile, so you can rip that tape off. It's a little bit unpredictable, and I have ripped further than I want to on some of the um, wrapping paper. So just be careful. Oh, see. It's okay. We can deal with that. I'm just going to cut along that tape. I'd rather rip it, but yeah, it's too scary. Okay, let's bring our background back in. I'm going to go ahead and glue these pieces down. I love that they're sticking up, but with this on here, they're going to have to be down. And it is going to have some texture even when I put her down because there's lots of bumpiness going on. And I am embracing that. Strings, strings attached. Alright, I'm going to bring her back in and just kind of position her where I'm going to want her. Now I'm working very small. You can certainly work on a bigger background. Alright, something like that. So I'm going to apply a generous amount of the Mod Podge onto our background. because I want that wrapping paper to go even more translucent because I want to see our yummy colors from our background. And I'm going to have one chance, man, to put her down, so. All right. Oh, look at that. Can you see those colors coming through the back? Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Then a layer of Mod Podge on the top. working that down into the texture. I have a little rip in the, the paper there. This is where I ripped it at first. And that is okay. 
All right, fun colors coming through. All right, we are going to let her dry. I'm not going to touch her again until she's dry. Okay, I can't quite get the glare off her uh, because of my overhead light, but we will revisit this piece uh, when the sun comes up. So, just going to go around and tear off around the edges. Leave on as much, take off as much, however you want that. I know you can't see her, but she, oh, there, a little bit better there. She is gorgeous. Absolutely. So this little bit of milkiness will disappear. So, yeah, let's go ahead around the edges. Just darken those edges a little bit with our Stabilo. So sorry for the glare. So leave this edge on, take it off, depending on how you're going to frame it. All right, there she is. Gorgeous, gorgeous. So here she is, mostly dry. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put her on the back of a book and have her be the back cover of a book. She's the right size. I really like her. She, I know that she's shiny to you guys. I'm trying to get some of the glare off. She's not quite dry, but you get the idea. Oh, I love the feel of it. All that texture. Yes, please. So go create, go play, and go have fun. <laughs>